Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am sitting in my old filming location because the dogs got into a fight earlier, so I'm being the parent sitting and making sure they don't fight again. You can see Jamie back here. She's the instigator of the fight and Guinness is alongside me. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm really here to do an Aussie April video. I have done a couple of videos recently where I looked at the best female writers and how many of them I have read the best Irish writers and novels, and how many of them I have read, and then I did Asian American writers. And I wanted to do another video like that, but for Aussie April. So I had a bit of a hard time figuring out a way to do this because there are not very many articles on Australian books. Usually you can find one that has maybe seven books. Some of them are very recent, some of them are old. I did find a BuzzFeed article, but it's a couple years old. And because it's a couple of years old, all of the photos and links and things had disappeared from it. And that was just really annoying. So I thought the best thing I could do is return to the structure that I did for who are the best female writers and have I read them where I'm just going to Google best Australian novels. That's the wording that I'm using. I have the list pulled up in front of me and I'm going to go based off of that. And the reason I got away from that was that in the results for Irish writers, there were people who were not Irish. Hopefully, we're not going to run into that here. I'm fully expecting that Peter Carey and Tim Winton are going to be on this list. We'll see how it goes. So let's kind of dive into the Google results. I anticipate also that I'm not going to be very familiar because I've seen the first two or three. And I'm probably going to have to use my laptop to get a little bit more information about the books. But I'm really excited to do this. I will say, if you have feedback on these authors, on these books that are going to be mentioned, please leave it in the comment section down below because this video in particular is something that I want to use as a sort of TBR builder. I want to discover more books that I can add to my already expansive TBR. So let's jump right in. The first one is something I have not heard of and an author who sounds vaguely familiar but isn't really familiar. It's The Secret River by Kate Grenville. So let's see what this is about. I'm just going to flip to the Wikipedia page of the book and use that as a basis. The Secret River is a 2005 historical novel by Kate Grenville about an early 19th century Englishman transported to Australia for theft. The story explores what might have happened when Europeans colonized land already inhabited by Aboriginal people. The book has been compared to Thomas Keneally's The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith and to Peter Carey's True History of the Kelly Gang for its style and historical theme. Obviously, again, that is something that I was completely unfamiliar with, but it sounds really interesting and really good. Australian history is something I really need to learn a lot more about. I'm currently reading The Yield by Tara June Winch, and that has a little bit of that history in it. But this feels like a sort of next level book for me to get into that. And again, if you have thoughts about it, please put it in the comment section down below. The next one is Cloud Street by Tim Winton. I read this book for Aussie April last year with Sarah from Hardcover Hearts as a buddy read. We both bailed on the book with about 100 pages left, which indicates that we weren't really liking it all that much. And that feels like a shame because from everything I've heard, Tim Winton is the most celebrated Australian author, at least living today. And Cloud Street is a book that a lot of Australians have claimed as the sort of great Australian novel. And I didn't like it. And a lot of people have commented to say that they loved it, but you know, I just, it didn't respond to it. And I didn't like the portrayal of the female characters and I had thought that I might revisit it and try to finish it last year, and as the year went on, it just became clear that that was not going to happen. So I feel like I should try another Tim Winton book at some point, but I did not get on very well with Cloud Street. And the next one is The True History of the Kelly Gang by Peter Carey. I had a feeling this one was going to be on the list, especially when it was mentioned in the thing for The Secret River. And I think what's really embarrassing for me about this is that I really don't know much about Ned Kelly. I think Ned Kelly is who this is about. So I'm not even really familiar with what the story of the true history of the Kelly gang is. But Peter Carey is an author I've heard a lot of really good things about, and this is probably the one that comes up most often. The True History of the Kelly Gang is a novel by Australian writer Peter Carey based loosely on the history of the Kelly Gang. Despite its title, the book is fiction and a variation on the Ned Kelly story. And again, something I'm very not familiar with 
in the first place. So I, that is something that I would absolutely put on my TBR and probably should put on my TBR. And the next one is My Brilliant Career by Miles Franklin. Now, bear with me a second because I'm going to quickly look into this. I think Miles Franklin is the name of an Australian literary prize. I believe they're equivalent of the Pulitzer. And I think its author is the same as the person from the Stella Prize. But in my head, I don't quite know how that works. So let's take a quick look. Okay, Stella Maria Sarah Miles Franklin, known as Miles Franklin, was an Australian writer and feminist best known for her novel, My Brilliant Career. And My Brilliant Career is the one that they are talking about. It looks like the Miles Franklin Award was created out of an endowment after she died. The Stella Prize, which is her actual first name, was created in 2013 to sort of do for Australia what the Women's Prize does. It rewards uh, literature by Australian women. So there you go. That is the story with Miles Franklin. So My Brilliant Career, that name sounds really familiar. I think it was a movie. I haven't seen the movie, but I could be wrong about that. It is a 1901 novel. It was written while she was still a teenager as a romance to amuse her friends. That's interesting. The heroine is an imaginative, headstrong girl growing up in rural Australia in the 1890s. Drought and a series of poor business decisions reduce her family to subsistence level, and her father begins to drink excessively, and she struggles to deal with the monotony of her life. She is sent to her grandmother's property where life is more comfortable. This sounds really interesting and like something that I would enjoy. So I'm going to leave this tab open on my laptop so I can circle back to it. I think my brilliant career by Miles Franklin is something I'm going to have to revisit and add to my TBR. The next book is The Slap by Christos Tsoulkas. I hope I pronounced that correctly. This is a book that I have heard of. I did not realize it is Australian. I believe it was even adapted into a TV show, which I did not watch. The narrative is presented through the viewpoints of eight individual characters and focuses on their reactions after a man controversially reprimands his friend's son by slapping him during a social gathering. I've heard kind of mixed things, but mostly good about this book. So this might be another one I have to try to look for. So far, obviously, I'm learning more about these books than I am discovering things I've already read. But that, to me, is the purpose of this, so I'm okay with it. I don't feel bad about myself. The next book is Jasper Jones by Craig Silvey. In summary, a small rural Australian town grows fearful when a young girl goes missing. 13-year-old Charlie grows especially fearful because he alone knows what has happened. Interesting. That is not much of a description, so this one I'm going to rely on you guys. If anybody has read Jasper Jones, please leave a comment down below. Is this something that should go on a TBR or not? It almost sounds like a kind of mystery thriller slant, and I'm not too big on those at the moment, so I'm inclined to skip it. But let me know if you've read it and would recommend it in the comment section down below. Another Peter Carey novel is next, Oscar and Lucinda. I think I saw the movie adaptation of this when I was a teenager. I can't remember when. I think my sister was watching it and I was only half paying attention. I remember something about a glass church. I hope that's correct. <laughs> that's all I remember. There was a glass church. I have nothing else. So let's look at the plot description of Oscar and Lucinda and see if I'm crazy. It tells the story of Oscar Hopkins, the Devonian son of a Plymouth Brethren minister who becomes an Anglican priest, and Lucinda, a young Australian heiress who buys a glass factory. Glass factory. Okay, maybe the church is real. They meet on the ship over to Australia and discover that they are both gamblers, one obsessive, the other compulsive. Lucinda bets Oscar that he cannot transport a glass church from Sydney to a remote settlement some 400 kilometers up the New South Wales coast. This bet changes both of their lives forever. I feel a little bit justified. I remembered the church accurately. Maybe it stuck out in my mind because it's such a bold thematic element for something. It's certainly unique. Let's give it that. I will say, I have not read the book. I don't remember the movie, but... I feel like I would be much more likely to read the true history of the Kelly gang than Oscar and Lucinda. But please let me know in the comment section down below. I think I had it in my head that it was more of like a Victorian novel. So I was definitely proved wrong about this one in a lot of ways, which is kind of disappointing because I saw the movie. Next is The Thornbirds by Colleen McCullough. I did not realize that's an Australian book. I have not read it. 
I have not seen the epic TV miniseries that came out, I think, in the late 70s or early 80s. I would have been far too young for it when it was released. It, I wouldn't have been born if it was in the late 70s. And I don't know the story, which is probably why I didn't know that it's Australian. I had no idea at all. Wow. The Thornbirds is the best-selling book in Australian history. It has sold over 33 million copies worldwide. I did not know that either. There is a very lengthy plot description that I am not going to do. All I will say is the quick little summary. It is set primarily in a fictional sheep station in the Australian outback, and the story focuses on the Cleary family and spans the years 1915 to 1969. I want to say, from what I've heard about it, there's a romance with a preacher or a priest but I could be wrong about that. So that is something that I do feel like I should read because I've heard good things about it over the years. So if that's something you think I should prioritize, please let me know in the comment section down below. The next one is something that is on my TBR, but I don't own a copy of. It's Picnic at Hanging Rock, a novel by Joan Lindsay. I believe it's really short too. Let me skip around. Yeah, it's 212 pages. So it's practically a novella. This is probably something I should really try to get in at some point, maybe this year or next year. It is about a group of female students at an Australian girls boarding school set in 1900. The girls vanish at Hanging Rock while on a Valentine's Day picnic. And it's about the effects the disappearances have on the school and the local community. I've heard really good things about this book. So I feel like I should keep my eyes peeled for a copy of it and see what happens with that. Next is Jane Harper's The Dry. I've heard really, really, really good things about Jane Harper. I did try to read The Dry. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. I started listening to it on audio and I only made it halfway through. And it's not that the book was bad. It's just that I'm really picky about mystery thrillers anymore. And it wasn't vibing with me. I don't remember the details too much. I believe it's one of those setups where somebody goes back to their hometown, secrets are revealed, and all that stuff. So I didn't have a great time with it, but I've heard a lot of other people have. And that's great. I do feel like it's within the realm of possibility that I would enjoy one of her books. So maybe I will try another at some point. The next one is another book I am completely unfamiliar with. And an author I'm completely unfamiliar with. It's The Harp in the South by Ruth Park. Ruth Park's classic novel is one of Australia's greatest. Hugh and Margaret Darcy are raising their family in Sydney among the brothels, grog shops, and run-down boarding houses of Surrey Hills where money is scarce and life is not easy. Filled with beautifully drawn characters that will make you laugh as much as cry, this Australian classic will take you straight back to the colorful slums of Sydney with convincing depth, careful detail, and great heart. That sounds like it could be really interesting. I'm going to leave this tab open and look more into this later when I'm not filming and can do a little bit of digging. But I'm very curious, if you know Ruth Park, if you've read this, please let me know in the comment section down below because that sounds interesting to me. It certainly grabbed my attention. Next is Voss by Patrick White. Another one I am completely unfamiliar with. It is based upon the life of the 19th century Prussian explorer and naturalist Ludwig Leichhardt, who disappeared while on an expedition into the Australian outback. And again, that is not a very descriptive summary of the book. So if you've read this, please let me know in the comment section down below if it would be worth checking out. I'm just kind of skimming the longer plot summary, and I'm kind of inclined to skip it. But let me know what you think. Okay, next we have Carpentaria by Alexis Wright. Another book and author I have completely not heard of. So she is an indigenous Australian author, which does put an emphasis on me. Indigenous authors are definitely people I would like to get to know more, especially if I'm doing Australian literature and trying to expand my horizons on that. The novel tells the interconnected stories of several inhabitants of the fictional town of Desperance, situated on the Gulf of Car Carpentaria, in northwest Queensland. There, the Aboriginal people of the Pricklebush clan are engaged in a number of argumentative conflicts with various enemies in the community, including the white inhabitants of Desperance, the local law enforcement and government officials, and a large multinational mining operation that has been established on their traditional sacred land. The plot description reminds me of The Yield, which I am reading right now a little bit. 
I'm going to leave this open in a tab so I can come back and look more. It sounds really interesting to me. And the next book is something I had no idea is Australian. I'm just going to click and double check. It's The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I had absolutely no idea that he's Australian. Yeah, he was born in Sydney, Australia. I had no idea. I have read The Book Thief and I really enjoyed it a lot. It is a really beautiful young adult novel about a girl in Germany, I believe, during the lead up to World War II and during World War II, who it has a love affair with books which have been banned. It's really good. I loved it. I haven't read any of Marcus Zusak's other books, which is actually, as I'm saying it, I'm remembering is not true. I started Bridge of Clay and really didn't like it, so I didn't finish. But I have not read I Am the Messenger, which a lot of people have read and liked and recommended. So I feel like I should get to that one at some point. Now we have The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. This is a Booker Prize winner, if I remember correctly. I'm going to check. It is winner of the 2014 Booker Prize. The novel tells the story of an Australian doctor haunted by memories of a love affair with his uncle's wife and of his subsequent experiences as a Far East prisoner of war during the construction of the Burma Railway. Decades later, he finds his growing celebrity at odds with his feelings of failure and guilt. I remember when this won the Booker, it grabbed my attention and I really wanted to get a copy of it. And then as time went by and I didn't have a copy of it, it dropped off of my radar. So maybe this is the kick in the pants. I need to get it back on my radar. What I heard about it at the time was really positive. If you've read it and you think it's something that I should prioritize, please let me know in the comment section down below because that was something that really grabbed my attention around the time it was released and just fell off my radar. So maybe I should get back to it. Oh, the next book is A Fraction of the Whole by Steve Toltz. I did read that book and I enjoyed it. I felt like it was too long. It's a very long book. Let's see. How long is it? 711 pages. And if I remember correctly, I think you could easily lop off about 200 pages, possibly more. I remember enjoying it. It was funny. It had this really great wit about it. It just kept going, and that was my complaint about it, if, if I remember correctly. I don't know how to explain it. According to Wikipedia, it follows three generations of the eccentric Dean family in Australia and the people who surround them. My memory is that it's really about the father and the son of this family, but it's been a while, so I could be wrong. It was published in 2008. I read it right around that time, so it's been over 10 years since I read it. Next is something that has definitely, definitely been on my radar as something to read, but I don't have a copy of. It's The Fatal Shore, The Epic of Australia's Founding by Robert Hughes. It's a history of the early years of British colonization of Australia, and especially the history and social effects of Britain's convict transportation system. It also addresses the historical, political, and sociological reasons that led to British settlement, first published in 1986. Part of me wonders, and this is maybe why I've held back from reading it a little bit, if it was published in 1986, does it hold up? But I've heard really good things about it, and it is certainly still in print and certainly still widely available, so I think it probably can't be too bad. It's definitely something I want to read. As I mentioned earlier, I really want to understand more about Australian history since they don't teach it in America. So this could be a really great way of getting some of that in. Next is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. Did not realize she's Australian as well. I'm just going to double check that on Wikipedia, the source of all things. She is an Australian author. Who knew? Lives in Sydney with her husband. I did not know that. So I have not read Big Little Lies. I have not seen the TV show. My sister was obsessed with the TV show, so maybe I should get around to it, but I, I just haven't done it. And maybe I should. The next one is Dirt Music by Tim Winton, and I'm very skeptical of trying another Tim Winton, but let's see what this is about. I feel like I should give him another chance at some point. This is about Georgie, who becomes fascinated while watching a stranger attempting to poach fish in an area where nobody can maintain secrets for very long. Disillusioned with her relationship with the local fisherman legend Jim Buckridge, she contrives a meeting with the stranger and soon passion runs out of control between two bruised and emotionally fragile people. I don't think I'm too into that. If I try another Tim Winton book, maybe not that one. But I also feel like that's one a lot of people have liked. So if you're a fan of dirt music, please let me know 
what you thought of it. Maybe I should reconsider my thoughts. Next is something I have not heard of at all. It's Looking for Ella Brandy by Melina Marchetta. It is her debut novel. Apparently a film adaptation was made in 2000. I haven't heard of it. It follows the Australian Italian daughter of Italian immigrant parents. Josie lives in Sydney and attends a Catholic high school where she is disillusioned with the cl cliques and social politics of her snobby peers. Her usually sophisticated, sassy demeanor is challenged when she is overcome with the pressure of her senior year of high school, the suicide of a male friend, and meeting her estranged father who is in Sydney on a business trip. She confides in a young man with a bad reputation who slowly turns into a romantic interest. I don't think I'm very interested in this one. If you have read it and think I should reconsider that, let me know. But based on that description, I'm already noping pretty hard. Next is Helen Garner's Monkey Grip. I have never read anything by Helen Garner, but coincidentally, I just got a package from Japan. Sean the Book Maniac sent me a couple of books that he was looking to unload, and one of them is Helen Garner's Collected Stories, and I'm really looking forward to that. Spoiler alert for my book haul for this month. So apparently this received mixed critical reception when it was released, but it is now accepted as a classic of modern Australian literature. It deals with the life of a single mother named Nora, as she narrates her increasingly tumultuous relationship with a flaky heroin addict, juxtaposed with her raising a daughter while living in share houses in Melbourne during the late 1970s. That sounds like it could be really interesting. Apparently, it was published at the height of a counterculture movement in Australia and a bohemia scene, and that could be really interesting. So I think I'm going to start with Helen Garner's stories, which I just got, but that sounds like something that would be great further reading once I've gotten that down. I was kind of wondering if this one was going to be on the list. It's Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. I did know that that's Australian. I have heard so many good things about that book. I can't even tell you. But I haven't gotten around to reading it, and I should really probably do that. Here is the quick plot description. Brisbane, 1983. A lost father, a mute brother, a mum in jail, a heroin dealer for a stepfather, and a notorious crim for a babysitter. It's not as if Eli's life isn't complicated enough already. He's just trying to follow his heart, learning what it takes to be a good man, but life just keeps throwing obstacles in the way, not least of which is Titus Braz, legendary Brisbane drug dealer. But Eli's life is about to get a whole lot more serious. He's about to fall in love, and oh yeah, he has to break into jail on Christmas Day to save his mom. I've heard so many good things about this book that it was already on my radar. I didn't really know the plot. That sounds fascinating, so I'm going to leave that tab open as well and look into maybe grabbing a copy of that. Next is something I haven't heard of either. It's A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. It is a romance novel published in 1950 when Shute had newly settled in Australia about a young English woman who becomes romantically interested in a fellow prisoner of World War II in Malaya and after liberation emigrates to Australia to be with him where she attempts by investing her substantial financial inheritance to generate economic prosperity in a small outback community to turn it into a town like Alice, i.e. Alice Springs. Does it jump out at me? I feel like I would probably pass on that one. The next one was referenced in an earlier one. It's The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith by Thomas Keneally. Thomas Keneally, I believe, is most famous for having written Schindler's List, which had a different title when it was published. I want to say it was Schindler's Ark and was a Booker Prize winner. This one says the story is written from the perspective of Jimmy Blacksmith, an indigenous Australian man on a mission of revenge. The story is a fictionalized retelling of the life of the infamous indigenous bushranger Jimmy Governor. Keneally has said were he to write the novel in the present day, he would not presume to write in the voice of an indigenous Australian. So we can see right there, this was published in 1972. It seems like this is a kind of classic Australian novel, but history maybe has caused people to revisit a little bit. I haven't heard of it. I, I know Thomas Keneally because of Schindler's List, which I have not read, and I haven't seen the movie since I was in high school. It sounds like it could be interesting, as long as you have that extra bit of thought going into it, that this is a white author writing as an indigenous person, and keep that in mind. But I also feel like I'm probably more likely to get to some of the other ones before I would get to that. There are more books listed here, but I'm getting long, so I am not going to continue going through them. I will just leave it here and ask you if you have other recommendations that are not on this list, 
please let me know. I'll quickly run through some of the names of the other ones. My Brother Jack by George Johnson, Bliss by Peter Carey, The Light Between Oceans, Seven Little Australians by Ethel Turner. It, so if you have anything you would like to add to this list, please let me know in the comment section down below. Because as I said, the purpose of this video is that I really want to expand my horizons when it comes to Australian literature. And I think the fact that it was so hard to find a list that covers Australian literature goes to show that we could all stand to do a little bit better on that. And I will leave it there for now. Let me know what your favorite Australian novel is, who your favorite Australian writer is, if you have one. Again, recommendations are very welcome. Please put them in the comments down below. As always, I really appreciate your time. Happy Aussie April. I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.